that farm beat is uh, God's favorite artist. If you think about uh, the most high, you know what I'm saying? And you think about uh, him enjoying some art and his favorite artist then, it's a picture of me, you know what I'm saying? So about me, um, started out, I started art, um, I mean, probably it's almost like I pick up a pencil um, and just doodling stuff on paper. Then from there, uh, once I got older, I saw my brothers, my older brothers, like doing the bubble letter, graffiti and all that. And then from there, that kind of intrigued me to mimic what they were doing, but it didn't really look the same. You know what I mean? Mine's like trash and what they were doing was like amazing. But you know, um, over time I kept practicing, which to me it didn't get any better, but you know, mom's telling me like, yo, you know, um, you know, it's good. You know what I mean? But it, I knew it wasn't. And around that time, I want to say, uh, this when I got introduced to my first Source magazine. So this was like early 90s. Flipping through the Source magazine, then I saw graffiti like from out in New York, like, you know, Coke 2, all these guys. And then I'm like, oh, these guys are better than my brother. So let me kind of like look at some of what they're doing. And from there, you know, I started practicing, drawing some of their names and all that. And then right after that, I birthed my own tagging style and everything else. So then, you know, me being um, in Chicago, one of the streets tagging. And then that just started to develop more and more and more, you know, um, on the art side. Um, and you know, the roots of graffiti, I mean, still run deep in my work, but it's not as, uh, it, it's not it's not me just doing a certain letter form. You know what I'm saying? Or like some characters or something like that. It's just more so me using my graffiti roots and then that same feeling to express something with a message. So that's all. Graffiti, if we're trying to get up to get people to know our names, you know, all over the city. So, you know, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. How would you describe your work from that aspect, from the social aspect? Well, it's really, to be honest with you, I, I didn't try to like make it have a message. It was me just trying to knock out a painting um, that I felt was saying something without me like having to break it down to like, you know, people, so once you see it, oh, I get it. You know what I'm saying? So, but I mean, the social uh, part of it, that's, that's still going back to the graffiti roots of, you know, um, things that we would express on the wall because it's for a certain community. You know what I'm saying? So it's like from there, taking that and not trying to make it look like graffiti art. Then it's like okay, now I found I found a way of putting certain images together that already have a meaning with an image, and then once you collaborate on those images, now it's saying something without even saying the words. Quick question: With that, because you know you said in the beginning days that your inspiration kind of was just watching your brothers mm -hmm. and you know them tagging, and you got you know a lot of inspiration from that, and then. You know, kind of getting into the graffiti and knowing what it means to have your name out there and spreading it through your community. What would you say is your inspiration for your works today? Today, my inspiration is pretty much everyday life. You know what I'm saying? Because there's so much that's going on, like from the news to social media to family to, you know what I mean? Like there's so many things that's going on. And I, I look at life as my inspiration, not just, you know, uh, music and you know just everything about life and i guess it's pretty much whatever is going on at that time and i feel like i i want to say it as loud as possible that means i'm gonna paint it as big as i can on the canvas you know what i mean so that way it's like that's almost like me uh making a perfect beat and having the loudest speakers and then going i'm going to blast it you know what i'm saying so it's like whatever message it is that's going on at the time, whether that be, you know, um, you know, like cops, that's, you know what I mean, crooked cops, or even um, the stuff that happened with Wall Street, man, you know, the recession and all that. So it's like, I just never know where it's gonna take me. Um, but most times it's just everyday life that inspires me. Your next show is here at the Bishop Gallery, and the title of that show is Pursuing False Idols. Mm -hmm. 
how did the, the title? Where did you get the title from, and how does that relate to your inspiration with that everyday thing? Like, what are you, what's the message you're trying to get across with this show? Well, for some false idols, it's really um, most times I'll say the immature thinking. Uh, sometimes we tend to think that okay, once I get rich or once I get more money, things gonna get better. Mm -hmm. But that's not the case. You know what I'm saying? And I'm, I'm a you know. I lived through that experience of being young and having friends, you know, throughout college and then starting to see a little bit of success for myself, but then my friends started seeing much more success and then from there they turned into like this evil person. Where it's like they didn't turn into the evil person, they were already that person, but now because of their circumstances becoming better than mine, now there's a large separation. And at the end of the day, that person thought that, okay, well, I'm good now. I can, you know, my life is gonna be so much better. But in actuality, it's not because now you're losing your friends, your family, and everything else because in your head it's greed. But you know, you're thinking that um, financial gain is gonna make everything so much better in my life. So pursuing false idols, that's one aspect of the false idol being the dollar where it's like, that's not gonna make you happy. Find what makes you happy that doesn't have any type of financial gain there, and that's gonna be internal happiness. You know what I'm saying? So that's one aspect of uh, pursuing false idols. And also, uh, pursuing false idols is kind of a, um, a piggyback of a show that I had called Love, Lust, and Desire, where Love, Lust, and Desire was similar to um, people loving money, People will lust for money and people desire money because they think, oh, at the end of the day, my life is so much better now. Things are golden and that's not the case. Um, when it's all said and done, what do you want Zeph Farmby's legacy to be? My legacy, to be honest with you, I, I just want my work to be around like Tupac, Elvis, and you know, everybody else that's remembered long after they're gone. Like, you know, I want people to get what they get from the work without me or without anybody giving an explanation on what it means or what I was about or you know what I mean like I just want the work to live forever like that's pretty much it and have my name stamped on it that's it